Buoyed by an influx of capital from the equity markets, many REITs have strengthened their balance sheets and positioned themselves to take advantage of distressed buying opportunities. Here to look at when we might see those opportunities begin to take place is Professor David Geltner, Director of Research with MIT Center for Real Estate. The MIT Transaction Base Index posted a record decline in price in the second quarter. Do you think that represented the bottom of the market? I wish I could say yes, but uh, no, I think there's still going to be um, some more decline in the remainder of this calendar year probably. Even with that record-breaking price decline, we started to see the sales volume increase. Why was that? Um, that was very interesting. It was uh, a little bit of um, good news, perhaps, maybe the first sign of the beginning of the formation of a bottom. Uh, it was driven by the fact that the supply side of the market, the property owners, uh, drastically reduced the reservation prices at which they're willing to deal. That's, that supply side index dropped over 18% in that quarter. Um, and that's, that's really what's responsible for the slight uptick in volume. It was still a small uptick in volume because the demand side also was still falling quite a bit, just not quite as far as the supply side. Um, but a as you mentioned in the report that, that you're starting to see uh, a capitulation take place. And is this something that's going to continue? Um, yes, uh -huh. I, I, I think it's, it's going to have to continue. Um, if I might, we, we have a little more recent information from another index that I'm involved with that, that also tracks the private uh, property market, the, uh, the Moody's Real Commercial Property Price Index, the CPPI. And what we've been able to look at there, that, that index has continued to fall. It's monthly. It has continued to fall in July and August and is down now 41% from its peak. But interestingly, there we can track, because the source of the data there, Real Capital Analytics, uh, flags whether a property uh, is a distressed property or not. And so we can track that index separately for what you might call healthy properties and distressed properties. Um, and what we see is that the, the healthy property index is down only about 33%, still a big drop, but the distressed properties are down 56%. 56% is a very deep drop. Do you expect prices in the overall real estate market to reach that level? That's what I'm worried about, actually. I, I, I think that would be what I would call a negative bubble, where prices would be so low as to really present um, seriously super normal returns for those who are able to buy at those prices. Um, that would just be a, at a level that would really be looking at a substantial positive pop coming forward from that, more than should be necessary in an, in an equilibrium market. Um, but it could happen. I do think that a larger proportion of the private marketplace will become distressed sales. And when do you expect transaction volume to return to a normal level? Um, that's the great question. We would all love to know. I, I'm, I'm thinking, um, so normal level, which is quite a bit less than the peak level, we may get back to uh, sometime during 2010. Uh, with a lot of that being driven by distressed sales and uh, you know, bargain hunters, uh, bottom feeders uh, coming in and picking those up. Um, the, the recent trough in volume in last spring was at levels less than one-tenth of the peak volume levels, uh, and I would say less than one-fifth of the normal sort of calm market uh, volume levels. I think we could get back to perhaps in that you know, sort of normal market range um, sometime during 2010. And when might you expect it to get back to that peak level? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's really, it, it seems that the real estate asset class, uh, particularly in the private market, it is subject to these long-term cycles. And uh, the cycle seems to be 15 to 20 years. So if we have another cycle, like we've had for at, at least two previous cycles now, going back, we can document it quantitatively back through 1970. We had a, a, you know, a crash in the mid-1970s, another crash in the mid-1990s, um, now a crash at this point in time. Uh, those have always been followed by major um, you know, up markets, um, initially just to sort of bring us back to an equilibrium level, but ultimately it, it, it seems to play out inevitably into excessive prices, what you might call a, bu a bubble, a positive bubble. Um, happening maybe 10 to 12 years after the trough. So if we do again, like we've done the past uh, two cycles, uh, what would that be, about the year 2020 or sometime maybe slightly past 2020? Um, I hope we retired by then, but uh, <laughs> hopefully still around. Well, I guess we'll have to have you back in 2020 to see if you were right.
for REIT.com, I'm Matt Bichard.